How's it going everyone? Today we're here with the Super Saiyan Trunks, the boy from the future. Man, what a name, but what a figure. This is definitely going to be the top runner for the best figure for 2023 from the Dragon Ball lineup. Now, everyone's been itching, clamoring, begging Tamashii for this figure for a long time and it is finally here. Now, the original one way back in the day in the 1.0 era with those nappy pants, um, everyone's been asking for a 2.0 or an upgraded version for a long time and I'm glad they waited this long. Good things come to those that wait and waiting several years for this trunks was definitely worth it because upgraded uh, articulation, the rubber for the vest, just so many nice points which bring this figure together to be absolutely fantastic. Now on the front here um, we can see some images showcasing what it comes with already and then on the back a wonderful section of Images showcasing all his items. So anyway, let's pop him out and we can get a closer look at what he does come with. So this release for Trunks is a retail release actually, despite having all these accessories. But he is one of the more expensive ones in the 7,000 yen range, opposed to the, what, 3,800 ones like Vegeta. Uh, so because of that, he does have a lot more accessories. Um, yeah, I mean, just starting off, we've got, what's it, one, two, three, four, five pairs of hands to do all of his iconic attacks, one's for holding his sword, uh, we've got two types actually, one for the straight grip, one with a more slightly angled one, if he wants to uh, reach around and pull that sword out. And speaking of the sword, we have it here already sheathed up, and then we have a rubber strap which will plug into it, and that will loop around his upper body. Now we do have the one base form uh, trunks hand, and that's just a neutral expression, and then we have the Super Saiyan head on there along with the flowing bangs which we can switch in and out if you want a more powered up aggressive look. Now for faces for the Super Saiyan we've got the more neutral angry one but looking to the side grumpy, uh, the shouting and teeth gritting one they're great for doing the power up poses. Uh, so yeah, overall, lots of cool um, hands and faces there for a nice variety. Though, <laughs> just straight up, I would say having some more base head uh, faces there would be good. But perhaps we'll get another version in the future with more accessories, which would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, anyway, let's pop them out of the packaging so we can check out the finish. Okay, so we've got him out of the packaging here and straight away we can see the awesome Capsule Court logo on his jacket with that nice uh, bluey purple colour with the grey pants and then the mustard boots which also ties in beautifully with his belt and then the belt blue and orange match the strap for his katana sheath uh, or sword I guess it is. Um, the hair itself is a nice yellow colour with some orange highlights in there as well so it's not just one straight colour like the full power Goku which is good to see. As he swings around here we can see more detailing of the sword and on the jacket which we'll get a closer look at soon uh, but it is kind of split out because this is a soft rubber which will move which is really nice. Uh, the orangey brown colour for the main sheath is nice along with the silver colour for the end there which also matches the handle for the sword. Uh, overall I think the finish is looking really nice. Um, it is kind of just your base out of a mold look like a lot of other figures. Though the colouring is really nice especially with all the folds in the pants there. It does capture the light well and create some shadows giving you some nice depth especially when posed up with some uh, lighting coming from one side. Now before we check out the articulation, we will pop the sword off here and I can show you how it attaches. So unlike the original trunks which had a peg on the back here, this one doesn't have anything. All it has is the strap which will pop in and out of two pegs on here and it is a soft rubber so everything moves wonderfully. So you just have to line this up with a hole and push it in. Now one thing I will say, it works really well though this bottom one will kind of come out pretty easily. Uh, so it can be a little bit annoying if you have it strapped to trunks while posing as it may come off. So I kind of recommend getting trunks posed up, then you put the sword on if required. Now the sword itself just slots in and out. And there's no individual parts, there's just one full sword which will just slot into the sheath which is really cool. So moving to the articulation, he has some really nice range there with the neck and hair combined. Though the head tilting back is actually rather limited, I was quite surprised at that. I think it is just because he does have the jacket there which will kind of get in the way a little bit. 
though insane that he does have some pretty nice left and right motion and again for the whole swivel left and right is really good as well uh, so overall the range is nice and even though it's a bit limited going back I haven't noticed it when posing this figure uh, so that is actually quite nice overall. Uh, the jacket itself is soft rubber. As we can see, if we peel it back here, we can see the inner joints. Uh, so if you are kind of having some trouble there, you can just move the arms in a little bit and it will align the jacket back up. Now again, the arms have some fantastic range of motion coming forward and again going back as well. So this figure has some fantastic upper shoulder range um, and again, I mean everything just feels really solid and nice. The elbow is your standard range which is good and again with the hands, no real difference there. And this has some soft rubber on the end for his jacket which is really nice too. Now if anyone's wondering if you can take the jacket off, you can. Uh, you pop the shoulders off and then the jacket will come off. So this is very close to being like a Bojack. Um, trying some, guessing some customizers could make some cool parts here to replace to make that overall Bojack look. Now on the back we do have the jacket there. Um, so, well, you, straight out of a box you can't achieve the uh, Bojack look. I think in the future someone may be able to make something really cool from this figure for that. So it's just a little bit of a bonus look at the underside for this figure. Moving down to the centre torso here, um, here's a nice range of motion going forward and back, though depending on the pose you're doing, you may end up with a bit of a big gap there which will show the inner side for the figure. So that is a little bit of a shame there, but that is a trade-off for getting some nice articulation that we see here. Um, we also get nice left and right motion for that top area. Now coming down to the hip area here, this is the uh, kind of redesign like the Super Saiyan 4 Goku figure and here we get some absolutely fantastic articulation, you can do the full on splits which is beautiful, um, the motion going forward is great and going back a bit more limited but it will kind of pop out and around so you can kick back but it is out on the angle so it is a little bit odd uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we also have the leg upper thigh swivel. And then the knee joint is, you know, pretty standard, a little more restricted due to the extra cloth down there in his legs. Moving down to the feet, we have a nice decent sized peg in there which allows a little bit of a forward and back motion. And we get the left and right pivot and the swivel is really nice. Uh, so these feet work really well um, and we have the toe tip there too. So I mean all this is combined with the ankle, foot, leg motion and the um, fantastic range in the upper leg area we can strike some really cool poses with this figure without too much trouble. So moving over to the faces now, this is the frowning look, it <laughs> looks really good, he's kind of pouting, kind of angry, like he's about to take out those androids or mecha freezer. Uh, we've got the nice lines above the head there as well which is a brown colour so it blends in beautifully as well. Next up is the similar look, but this time he's looking off to the right, which is great. This one can pair really well with the sword, and he's kind of pulling it out the back there, which is really cool. Next up is the screaming head. This one's really nice. Again, the separation for the colour from the mouth, the teeth, and the tongue is great, and all the extra covering and detailing. Now, this one here, we can switch off the bangs, and it will reveal the face blade. So if you want to change your face, this is when you can just pop it off, but in this case we'll put on the extra bangs with the hair flowing up as it pairs beautifully with the shouting powering up face here. And as we can see, compared to the bangs before which kind of drip down, these ones flow all the way up to match kind of that flowing aura look. And then finally for the Super Saiyan here is we have the teeth gritting uh, look. Again, this one here is for beautiful lines coming through above your eyes uh, to bring forth that emotion. Um, and this one here again works really well with the raised bangs. And then finally we have the base neutral trunks head here which has a nice purple colour. And again, very similar to the first Super Saiyan head is that subtle frowning look he has there, kind of pouting. Uh, it's nice, it would be nice to get kind of a happy or a smiling look for the base head as well. And I've also attached the sword here and we can see it just droops underneath the uh, jacket which is really cool. Everything is loose and you can move it up and down without any issue. So that brings us to the comparison and pros and cons section of the video um, and yeah we have the original trunks sitting here behind him and it is crazy to think that these are the same line um, drastic change in not only proportion but also design choices 
I mean, when you just see it by itself, I thought, yeah, it was really nice. But then when you see the new one, you think, this is really nice, but when together, yeah, I'm not really sure if I prefer the smaller or larger sized trunks. Maybe a subtle in-between would have been nicer. Um, but looking at these two, there's no doubt that the brand new trunks here is the superior figure. It, I mean, they don't even look like they're from the same figure line anymore. Um, but in terms of uh, aesthetics and colouring, uh, we had a more brighter orangey colour for the boots and belt, where we really Whereas we have more natural earthy tones for the brand new The Boy From The Future uh, trunks here. Um, the sword as well, the sheath, we have a brighter orange on the original opposed to a bit more of a darker neutral colouring. Whereas on the other hand, the colour for the hair was a bit more light and natural on the original, whereas now it's a bit more vibranty and purple. Uh, same for the colouring of the jacket, but more of a purple colour opposed to the blue. Um, so some real subtle differences there. I, I don't really have a strong preference either or for the colouring, but how about you? Let me know in the comments below if you have a preference to the colour from these two. So then moving on to the pros and cons for the brand new trunks here, pros being articulation, uh, styling, I think just proportions between each part of his body works beautifully well, uh, the new sword design is great, the soft um, rubber material is fantastic, the faces look great, um, we've got the base and Super Saiyan head, uh, the flowing bangs as well for the Super Saiyan look, we've got a great selection of hands for closed fists, the open ones, um, the ones for holding the sword, uh, so a nice variety there. Uh, the sword looks really good and it's nice and easy to use, you can pop it in and out of the same sheath. Uh, so yeah, overall that is great articulation as well. It's fantastic with those newly uh, uh, with those newly designed joints. And oh, and here's also retail, decently priced, 7,000 yen, so you get a lot for that which is great. So coming to this one, we've got a few small cons. Um, first one being lack of face plates with a base head. I really feel like a smiling face would have been fantastic. Um, the next small con, uh, the new system for holding on the sheath is great, though it does pop off a little bit easy on the bottom one there. Uh, overall not an issue, maybe long term um, it might become an issue perhaps, uh, it's a bit hard to tell at this stage. Uh, another con for me, uh, I understand why it's done like this, but on the jacket, the way it looks here, it's not too bad, but it kind of bugs me a little bit too, if you're looking at it from the back without the sword. When you get the sword on there, it's definitely nowhere near as bad, and if you're looking from the side of front, it isn't an issue at all. Uh, but that is a small con for me. It would be nice to get that a bit tidier, but I don't really think it would be possible. And the trade-off is we get the nice soft rubber for the jacket, more articulation, and it overall looks better from the other angles. So a very small comment there. Uh, yeah, but overall that sums up for me. I don't really have any other points on this figure that I'm not really happy with. Uh, great addition to the lineup. I think it's going to be hard to beat for a figure of the year in my eyes so far. Uh, but yeah, if you want to check out more photos, jump on rockcatellar.com, uh, 360, and other selection of images. And there'll be more on Instagram and at the end of this video as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely drop a comment below what you think about this figure compared to the original and the premium color version and all the other trunks as well. Uh, so yeah, again, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, cheers!